Hello and welcome to the second part of the tutorial for Beautiful Soup following the standard Beautiful Soup documentation. So, on the first part, we have finished up to here, speaking about a function, and now we are going to speak about Findo. So, in order to start our tutorial, we need uh, to go here on the top copy the HTML doc, put it in our Jupyter Notebook and press Shift and F5. So this way whenever we ask hey, what is HTML doc, it would give us this and then import back the beautiful soup BS4 just to make this soup out of what we have. Yes. And yeah, I mean I'm going to delete this. And now we can go back to the place where we have finished. And this place was here, the find o. So, what can we do with this find o method? Let's take a seek. So we can say soup find o and give us the title. Shift and F enter and it gives us the Dormuse story. This is the title, the thing between the title. It would be pretty much the same if we even use, for example, the head. Yes. It gave us exactly the head. If we try to abuse it and ask for HTML, it will give us anything. But this is quite much. Okay, so what else can we do? Okay, we can also say, also say uh, we want to see like the paragraphs within the title. I guess. Let's see. What is this? P and title. Yes, it gives us the P class title and then the boat and then the domain story can also ask for all the refs, all the links, with other words, and yeah, this is it, we get a lot of data here, uh, we can also ask for specific ones, for example, per ID, Findo actually works quite well, like uh, we asked for ID link too, and it gave us the whole link, and let's see what can we do with the regular expression, we can ask for sub find string equals regular expression compile and then sisters whoa we got something interesting here once upon a time there were three little sisters and their names were okay that's interesting so the idea of the sisters is that it actually searches for example in the in our text and it gives the whole line for example if we search for well from the last line, those who give us the last line line, and they left on the bottom as well. For example, if it looks for the Domus, yeah, it gave us this interesting part. Okay, so let's continue with searching by CSS class. And what it says, it's very useful to search for a tag that has a certain CSS class. But the name of the CSS attribute class is a reserved word in Python. Of course, it is a reserved class word. Using class as a keyword argument will give the pseudo syntax error. So that's why we use class underscore. Wow. Something interesting. Let's see. Soup dot And we look for the a. Uh, and the class underscore is sister. So this is it. We found everything. Class sister, class sister, class sister. Great. Yeah, it works. Uh, what else can we do? We can do sub find all class recompile itl. What's exactly itl? Hmm. Interesting. ITL. Okay. ITL is a part of title. Like this part, actually. ITL. So we are actually looking for the class that has ITL in its uh, name. For example, if we look for class having I in his name, we would get title, sister, 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 which is quite. Okay, I wouldn't say interesting, but it is something. Okay, let's see. It has six character CSS class. 
OK, and then we press Enter and we say return CSS class is not null and has len of 6. It's an interesting uh, function, but still OK. And it gave us this. OK, then for example, if we want to get the other class, not sister but title, let's say 5. And let's name it has 5 characters then class equals has five characters whoa we get title we get story and for a reason we get also sister hmm. although sister has like obviously six characters that's rather strange i would say the reason that it actually returns uh, everything else is that it actually returns only the P class title here. And title has 5, and everything else is inside it. And if we go to 6, you see like how it returns it with commas and everything else. And with 5, mm -hmm. there is no comma. Okay, there is a comma. The comma is here. So it is the title, the story sisters are in the story and then we have story again so yes these are the commas it returns three for example we may say len okay let's see whether it would come len soup yes three exactly okay uh, true and interesting i guess uh, remember that a single tag can have multiple values for its classes attribute for sure Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, body strike out, CSS soup, class strike out. The most important part is whenever we search by classes to remember that class has an underscore and it has this underscore only to be different from the class word which is reserved in Python. Okay, you can also search for exact string value of class attribute, great. Body strike out, of course you can search. I mean find always is actually rather useful thing. As you see it returns a list. And whenever you say something like strike out body, it uh, returns nothing because it's not strike out body, it's body strike out. It's like this. Yes. So let's continue with the string argument now. So the string, you can search for a string instead of tux, great. Yeah, and with the name in the keyword argument, you can pass string, regex, list, function, or value. True. Well, uh, yeah, let's see. What happens with find all string lz? Of course, we're gonna find lz. What would happen if we say find all string uh, something like i? Not a lot, actually. Uh, what is if if we put like uh, Elsie, Lissy, and Lassie, and Tilly? Yeah, okay, w quite good. It returns us a list of Elsie, Lassie, and Tilly, which were the ones here. Okay, Dormu story, Dormu story. It is twice written, obviously. Here, the Dormu story, the Dormu story. So, we get it twice. Okay, and now we have some function here, which is named is only string within a tag. Okay, this is obviously the comment. And then return s is uh, as parent string, great. And now let's take a look soup find all string is only string within attack and let's see what are we gonna get the domain story lz lassie tilly okay no. this, this is the only string within attack yes because it is how this is how it is the domain story the domain story and then we have lz lassie and tilly what if we had not only the domain story but uh Let's say we add here 
some, I don't know, some diff. And it's okay, it would be class brother id link 11. It wouldn't be ref, but as I said, it would be diff class brother id. And it would be also here diff, and it would be here brother like this. Okay, so HTML doc shift enter, um, BS4 shift enter, and here. Did we get the brother? Yes, we also get the brother, which is also the only string in a tag, like this. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what is this one. Soup, find o a in string lc. Well, and we got, we found the string lc and we got the a, the link, including everything. What else can we get here? Okay, difference between string and text. No, in this case it's literally the same from what I'm saying. Well, it was because this is in earlier versions it was called text and now it stayed because of reasons for uh, competitiveness. Not competitiveness but compatibility. Oh, right, limit argument. Yeah. Oh, that's rather interesting. Stop uh, sub find all a limit. Yeah, without the limit, for example, it would find all of them. Uh, recursive argument sub HTML find all title. That's rather interesting. One title. So, pretty much, um, if we want. Uh, Beautiful soup to consider the direct children of the of it. We can pass recursive equals false. And what if we put recursive recursive into uh, true? Recursive true is the default one. We get this. And recursive false, we get nothing. Yeah, because uh, recursive false is like this. Yeah. So the title tag is beneath the HTML tag, but it is not directly beneath the HTML tag. Yeah, exactly. So it's sub HTML find all title recursive false. Yeah, we look in the HTML. Yeah, if we had like this sub find all title without the recursive part, yeah, okay, we would have get exactly the same. Okay, lots of search tree searching methods in the beautiful soap, of course. I mean, this is. The search method is like kind of like ninety percent of what the beautiful soap is doing, I guess. Calling a tag is like calling find all. Makes sense. Yeah, find all. Or we can also ask sub a. Mm, shift enter or sub brother. I think it was a tag that I just introduced. Or what was it? Uh, no, it was a tag. Okay, link 11. Uh, okay, link 11 was a tag I introduced. No. Mm, oh, actually, tag is like. Yeah, this is a. Yes, this is the tag, and we only have one div that I introduced, and this is this brother link 11 brother. Okay, so these lines are also equivalent. Let's see the lines. Find O and yeah, they are. Mm. So let's see whether they are really equivalent. Well, this one not exactly, but no, actually 100%. The funny part is that, yeah, beautiful sub tutorial actually. Whenever it's the same, it only passes it once, which is interesting. But I think this is because of Jupiter and like some kind of bonuses that we get. Okay, so what about a find? The find out method scans the entire document looking for results, but sometimes you only want to find one result. Yeah, this happens a lot. If you know the document only has one body tag, it's a waste of time to scan the entire document looking for more. In general it is. Rather than passing limit 1 every time, 
with find all you can only use the find method yeah makes sense nearly evident mm, pretty much yeah I mean we here have limit one so it stops looking for the first one here it only knows it looks for one so this is what it does mm -hmm. so uh, let's continue with find parents and find parent signature is quite normal find parents uh, so our first is a string sub find lessy and a string would be lazy. Yeah, found it. So a string find parents a. Yeah, so it found lazy and then it found its parents with a. So it found out the ref parent of lazy. And if we need the paragraph for lazy. This is it, find parent paragraph, means pretty much, yeah, the parent of this. It would be interesting whether we can combine this, for example, when take a look like this. Eh, obviously not. Yeah. Uh, and this is because first argument was a name. And the second was something else, okay, we were here. Uh, find parents p class title, the last thing. And I think there was something wrong. Okay, class title is an invalid syntax. <laughs> well, it's rather interesting. Find parents and find parent. Well, Let's see, a string is still there, yeah, and still it gave us a mistake, yeah, somehow class equals title, is uh, obviously something that doesn't exist, okay, let's see whether we can change it a bit and put class story, story, no. Class equals story also doesn't work. So, yeah, okay, there is obviously some difference between this and that. Let's override it and continue with find next sibling. So, first link would be sub A. Yeah, great. So, let's see what this first link is actually. This one, the LC. Yes, of course this is it. So find, find next sibling, this is the beautiful part, it's called chaining. Find next siblings, it gives two, find next sibling, it gives one. It's really like speaking a normal language, like you just put a plural and it works. You put it like a plural away and it's only one. I, I'm really happy I'm not the one that coded this one. I wouldn't have done it that well, definitely. It's not me. So, continuing first story paragraph. And this is it. We get a story and we get a lot of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, we, we, we were looking for P and a story. So, next sibling of the paragraph is this. Next siblings. Yeah, okay, it's only one, so it works. Find previous sibling and find previous siblings is something that I'm going to skip because it's pretty much the same, but reversed. Find all next and find next. Mm, this is also, yeah, skippable. Let's go to find all previous and find previous. Okay, first link. So A. Of course, this is it. And then we say first link find previous paragraph P find our previous paragraph be before the link and it actually gives us the paragraph yeah mm -hmm. and what happens here false link find previous title it gives us the title and that's great now let's talk about the CSS selectors a bit 
So CSS selectors, pretty much, yeah, just selector. We can always say a hey, soup select me the title, and then we can say stuff like this one, end of type three. Let's see what is end of type two, and what is end of type one. I'm afraid to press the zero. Okay, no, that's not bad. And if we press like unlimited one, okay, quite cool. Find tags beneath other tags. Well, it works, yes. So we can do a lot of stuff, obviously. And let's try with modifying the tree. That's the interesting part. Changing tag names and attributes, yes, definitely. So, boldness is extremely bold, definitely. And we say, okay, tag sub b. And let's see, tag, yeah, bold is extremely bold. That's great. And now we can do stuff like this. Tag name is bold quote, tag class, very bold, tag id. Interesting, yes. And we can also delete class, delete tags, with obviously with del, and whenever we say with tag. We get this kind of stuff. So we deleted the ID, obviously. We deleted the very bold, and we only have the bold quote. So modifying dot string attribute. This is uh, tax content replaced with the string that you give. Okay. This is our markup, and of course we make a soup out of it. And then we say tag equals soup a, and then tag string is new link text dot. Okay, and then we take a look at the tag. Yeah, okay. A href a. Okay. Okay, we can also append obviously. And we can append a bar. I don't know about you, but whenever I think about a see a bar, I don't think about full bar. I think about Sala stuff. It's not bar Raffaele as well. So super contents full bar. Yeah, great. Okay, append and extend are something that I always think about when I have to use pretty much lists. Let's see what is the difference. One, two, three, four dot append one okay append 11 12 33 and whenever we say lee come on really okay lee is a new list okay no new list one two three and then here we say lee append and then we ask fully, let's see, yes, this is the difference. So you see like to this list on position 0, 1, 2, 3, on position 4, we have now this thing. If we want to have it like neat, we have to use extent, so like this. And this is how we simply add the list and it kind of dissolves into our previous list. Not like this list in list, but simply units in list. So this is the same in here in extent. Yes, I think this is what they are explaining here in the tutorial exactly. Uh, beautiful soup, soup A, just a graph of soup, and then we use extent. And this is how it looks like. S on soup on. And it somehow extends. Yeah. So the soup contents are like this. And of course we can see the contents soup s on this one. Mm -hmm. I'll skip the navigable string and the new tag and I'll go to insert. So tag insert is like tag append except for the new element doesn't necessarily go at the end of the parents cont contents. Yeah makes sense let's see markup is like this beautiful soup 
uh, tag soup and let's see tag insert great so whenever we need the tag we get this thing and tag contents yeah this is it the tag contents are there insert before and insert after I hope they are rather clear <laughs> only by their name and let's see the clear part okay so markup is this one and then we have a soup and then we have tag clear and whenever we say tag it's actually yeah what it did um, let's see what we had before tag and then we have tag clear and tag so we make a difference between the two so shift enter shift enter this is how it was and this is how it is after the clear Mm -hmm. I pretty much think that it's the same. Here it removes the contents of the tag, really. Okay, let's research here a bit. Oh yeah, it's obvious. And it is like this. Yes. Someone is missing the parentheses, wasn't me. Yeah, so this is the difference. You see tag clear removes this part of the tag, obviously and it also removes okay it only takes the a so yeah it also removes the italic part which is coming from i don't know where because it's rather strange yeah ah, okay this is the italic yes okay sure uh extract removes attack or string from a tree it returns the tag and string that was extracted. Yeah. Rather interesting. Mm, markup. And let's put also a soup. And I tag would be soup. I extract. This time don't forget anything. Yes. And now let's see what is a tag and what is a I tag. Okay, just to have them both printed. So, I tag is this, I tag is that. Yeah. And if we try to print the parent, it would be none. Okay. What about tag decompose? Removes the tag from the tree, then completely destroys it and its contents. Wow. This sounds interesting. Removing a tag and destroying it and its parents and no, without the parents. Okay, soup I decompose, and then we have a tag, and that's it. Uh, okay, wrap wraps an element in the tag you specify returns the new wrapper. Great. So I wish I was both. I wish I was Italian. And it would put italic here. And then soup peer up. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay. I wish it was Italian. And it is Italian. And then uh, what happens with this one? Diff. Soup peer up. And yeah, the problem is that. We forgot the second here, a second um, parenthesis. Oh, there is a mistake in the documentation of the beautiful soup. Wow, that's achievement finding mistake in the documentation of Python. Yeah, okay. It's probably let's continue with unwrap. Unwrap is pretty much the same. Let's take a look at smooth. So soup smooth is supposed to be smoothing our stuff. Let's see. Uh, this is the unsmoothed stuff, like this. A, a one or two, one or two, yeah. Some house doesn't look nice. So, sub smooth, sub smooth contents, one or two, and then we simply say sub p prettyfy. Yeah, 
and if we print it even it should be like this here you see like p one to prettify it's a bit prettified yeah and and smooth it okay so output pretty printing wow that's something that i would be interested in let's see uh yeah okay so this is the prettify thing it's obvious it's interesting and we see like everything going like i think just two spaces or one space yeah one space per indentation idea yeah okay not pretty printing nah string soup yeah and then we can use the unicode soup a mm -hmm. that's rather strange Anyway, with some research, actually the problem is that Python renamed the Unicode type to string and the old string type has been replaced by bytes. Cool. Yeah. So, let's leave it like this. And take a look at the output formatters and take one at random. Let's say, yeah, let's take this one. So from BS formatter we import HTML formatter and then take some function uppercase and a lot of stuff to upper face and now see what's going to happen. Well everything's great coming big. I link to example.com. Yeah. Mm-hmm rather good i would say in this format or what about uh, well this is a separate class for unsorted attributes interested what is it going it's unsorted attributes then some uh, yeah no it's not doing anything because i just forgot like lots of other random stuff yeah, so beautiful soup, this, and then we see attributes encode, and it gives me back three, two, one, just the attributes of the p. Mm, let's remove the this one. Yeah, just the attributes of the p, without the encoding, and then we have this unsorted attributes HTML formatter. And if k equals m, yeah, yield. Okay, this one is something that I should take a look better. Mm. Yeah, implementation auto filter so the m attribute whenever it appears. Okay, so pretty much if we didn't have this one, let's see, this is how it looks with this one. And I'm, what I'm going to do is rather make exactly the same class. And so the attributes two, in which I'm going to remove uh, if m. Okay, I'm here going to write one, and I'm going to print exactly the same thing for matter unsorted attributes two, just to see what's the difference. Okay, obviously there is a difference. Uh, this M is filtered in the first one and the M is not filtered in the second one because I changed the condition. Okay, so let's continue with uh, get text now. Yeah, the get text is if you want to get the text part of the document tag, you can use the get text method. It returns all the text in a document or beneath the tag. As a single Unicode string. Great. Let's take a look. Yeah. So soup get text is what we're gonna do. Soup dot get text. I linked to example.com. Really happy for you. 
And we can also say hey soup I get text example.com. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Soup dot I link to example dot text. Yes, exactly. We say I want the text in the I. What is it if I say I want the text in the ref soup a get text whether it would be as good as I hope. I link to example.com. Yeah. I link to example.com without having the italic within example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Rather good. You can specify the string. Join bits together. Ta -la -la. So we get text not like this, but like this. Yeah. And specifying the parser to use. Differences between parsers. I'll simply skip this one and going to encoding. Okay, specific encoding in HTML and XML documents, which which are ASCII or UTF-8. But when you load that into beautiful sub documentation, you discover it's been converted to Unicode. Yeah, great. I mean, Unicode is the good encoding that. Everyone likes, at least me. And you see this kind of interesting part here. So, print super original encoding. And print should be with small letters. Okay. Yeah. What would happen if we put some Greek stuff here? Whatever Nemo is, it's not Greek. Uh, soup H1. Mm -hmm. Soup original encoding. What would be here? Soup H1 was supposed to be the Greek stuff. I guess. Yes, this is it. Nemo. I'm thinking about Captain Nemo, but it could be anything. And there are a lot of stuff that we can fix with encoding. Let's see here. Some interesting thing. This is Israeli. Uh, so, let's see. Mm, yeah, exactly. Okay, output encoding I would uh, skip and just because, yeah, it's not that fun, but it is there. And we'll go to smart quotes. You can Unicode, damn it, to convert Microsoft smart quotes to HTML and XML. Let's see how it happens. Markup. And let's see what this markup looks like at the end. Yeah, something interesting. Uh, Unicode, damn it. Mm -hmm. It's not defined. Yeah. It's not defined because someone didn't write this. Yes. BS4 import Unicode, damn it. I just love Microsoft Word, smart close. I'm really happy for you. Yeah. Okay, inconsistent encoding. Okay, this is like my daily life as someone who works into Cyrillic as well, like another alphabet. Okay, comparing objects for equality. Okay, this one seems interesting. Markup, let's see what is it. Beautiful soup says that two navigation streak or tag objects are equal when they represent the same markup. In this example, the two both tags are treated as equal even though they live in different parts of the object tree because they both look like pizza B. Yeah, okay. So, markup I want both pizza and more both pizza. I'm happy for you. 
then soup, beautiful soup, markup, HTML parser, first B, second B, soup, find OB. Okay. And then we have uh, print, first B, second B. Okay, this is like Python uh, 2, but I'm going to change to Python 3. Okay, obviously this 4.4 uh, should be changed a bit. And then, let's see again, element, this is the same element, okay. Uh, before this, I want to print as well, first B, and second B. So, just to see what are we comparing, second B, okay, pizza, pizza, rather the same, then first B and second B are obviously the same, but previous element and second previous element are not the same. And I like okay something Pythonic. We can also say print first b is second b. Of course, false. But it was given here as an example. Okay, copy beautiful soup object. You can use copy copy to create a copy of any tag or navigable string. Thanks for telling me. Uh, okay, it's really. Like this is one of the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. In Python 2 there are no parentheses in the spring, in Python 3 they are because it should be. So sub p and then we can use copy. So if the copy is considered equal to the original since it represents the same markup, -la 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 -la. but it's not the same object. Of course it's not the same object but they are equal. Yes, that makes sense parsing only part of the document and parsing only part of the document is rather interesting so let's start with it so parsing only part of the documents so import substrainer only a tag substrainer tag a only tag with id link great continuing and another function which looks like this is short string return len is less than 10 and then let's see what is it going to get nothing what if we do it like this yeah, some kind of an element which is interesting okay so now we get again to our backstory part draw muse story with the three little sisters and beautiful soup HTML parse only pretty fine. Mm -hmm. well, this is it. It took only only tags. Parse only only attacks. And only attacks is the substrainer A. So we only get the part with the A's. We didn't get uh, all the other stuff here. Which is rather interesting. What if we only take the a beautiful soup dog parse only only tags with link ID and then we pretty fine pretty much I'm expecting only the sister of this one yeah the second one let's see whether my expectations are okay and we because of the pretty fine it even became pretty uh, yeah let's see from link two came here and at the end what are we gonna get here short strings pretty fine well, it doesn't work all the time because whoa, non type has no line. Makes sense. So print beautiful HTML doc HTML parser parser only only short strings dot pretty fine. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, use only short strings is this one and okay then take this one and take this one no substrainer is short string string only short strings okay no 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 object of type non type has no len Mm, yeah, sometimes it's like this, but 
what are we expecting is uh, this thing beautiful HTML doc, HTML parser. Is it because of the prettify? I guess not because this is unexpected. Okay, unexpected end of file while parsing. Mm. Let's see whether only short strings like uh, exist at all. Yes. Only short string text. Mm. Yeah, okay, it's non object equals none. Okay, I'm expecting some Boolean answer, but I'm not going to get it. And here it's obviously unexpected. Yeah, okay. So you can also pass a substrainer method covered in the searching of the tree. This probably isn't terribly useful, but I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, cool. Let's take a look. Beautiful sub HTML doc and sub find all only short strings. Okay. And it happened somehow. Like what we were expecting. What I was expecting, yeah. Like a lot of stuff. And yeah. So the last part of the tutorial is the troubleshooting and the diagnose. So pretty much here it says that if you're having trouble to understand what beautiful soup does to a document, pass the document into diagnose function. And beautiful soup will print out a report showing you how different parsers handle the document and tell you if you like if you're missing a parser that beautiful soup couldn't be using, okay. So let's take a look. I mean I don't know what's bad HTML and most probably that's the problem. Bad HTML as file is an unfound one. But let's try to I don't know to replace it with something. So uh, I will I found a file which is called Bulgaria Tree Maps, which is three Google Maps of Bulgaria. And I have used like some years ago. And obviously there is like some error because I haven't uh, uh, yeah, updated like stuff in Google. So I'm just remain taking this and putting it here. Of course it won't find it because it's uh, on the previous directory. So it should be like this. And now it gave me a lot of information about the diagnostics running on Beautiful Soup. Pretty much told me like trying to parse your markup with HTML parser. Here's what HTML parser did with the markup. And it did a lot of interesting stuff. Trying to parse your markup with HTML5 lib. And here is what HTML5 lib did with the markup. Again lots of interesting stuff. And then trying to parse your markup with LXML. Yeah, same stuff. Mm, then LXML, XML. And then, no. Pretty much, this is what the diagnose does. So, thank you for uh, following me and watching me up to now.